so good to see you today. I want to share my message this morning. Handwriting on the wall, interpretations of God's providential hand today. I want to read from Daniel chapter 5, verse 5 through 9. Now, sometimes I'm repeating some of these verses, but you have to stay with me because this is revelation upon revelation, and you're going to understand why. In the same hour, the finger of a man's hand <clears throat> appeared and wrote opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his hips were loosed and his knees knocked against each other. The king cried aloud, listen, to bring the astrologers. Notice who he is calling upon. The astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. The king spoke, saying to the wise men, or should I say the unwise men of Babylon, Whoever reads this writing and tells me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck, and he shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now all the king's unwise men came, but they could not read the writing and make known to the king the interpretation. Then King Belshazzar was greatly troubled, listen, his countenance was changed, and his lords were astonished. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it brings revelation to us, even in our times, even in our day and in this season. We thank you, God, for fresh revelation and understanding concerning our nation and our leaders as you have spoken to me to interpret all that I'm seeing through the book of Daniel, and in particular, Daniel chapter 5. All that I'm seeing in our nation today concerning our leaders and your providential hand in our nation and how much hope that it brings to us to see that you are so active and that you rule in the kingdom of men. We thank you for it, God. We thank you for your shepherd staff that gently governs your people and your rod of iron that, if needed, will dash into pieces those who would lead a nation in the wrong direction. We thank you, Lord, for Psalm 2 that shows us these things, and we bow our hearts to you, King of Kings. In this hour, Lord, we thank you for the glory that we see, your glory that we see in this season, and we give you thanks that you are working so profoundly on our behalf in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, <clears throat> amen and amen. Amen. Go on, give God praise. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Handwriting on the wall. Interpretation. Interpretation of God's providential hand today. And so you have to understand in context that our faith, your faith, my faith, in God takes on many battles, many battles personally, many battles on behalf of others. Our faith is powerful when it comes to what God wants to accomplish in the earth. He's looking for agreement. And sometimes when we are battling for those who need salvation, we will use our faith. We will call upon him. We will, we will stand on his word of healing and believe his word. And God will answer our prayers for ourselves, for our loved ones, whatever. But other times, our faith not only is used to battle and, and deliver people from their deception and from the attack of sickness and disease. Sometimes our faith is used to take on battles against spiritual wickedness in high places and power in our nation. And what does that mean? That means there are principalities and powers according to Ephesians chapter 6 where we are wrestling with uh, uh, nas national demonic principalities and powers when entire nations are given over or pockets in nations are given over to demonic powers. And so 
our faith, God calls upon our faith, just not only to pray for the salvation and the healing of loved ones and people that we know, but to do spiritual battle for our nation. How many understand what I just said? And so Jesus declares this. He commands this. And many people want to run and hide when it comes to what we're talking about. Many Christians run and hide because they're afraid of confrontation or being rejected by people. You cannot operate in fear when it comes to things like this. You cannot, just like you can't operate when you want to talk to somebody about the gospel, some of, some of your loved ones that you're believing God to save and you're doing spiritual warfare for them. you gotta, you got to stand up. you got to rise up and speak. The power of God. You have to preach the word of God. Teach the word of God. Bring them along in the word of God. And do warfare for them. Sometimes you will suffer rejection. But that's no matter to you, right? You're doing the will of God. In the same manner, the church and Christians are to do warfare. We are to use our faith. And it doesn't look good. Like Jen says, you feel surrounded. It doesn't look good. But you have to use your faith in this hour to do warfare for something far greater than us, and that is our nation. Missionaries do it all the time. When they go into nations, they do warfare. They do principality and power warfare. They, they cast down principalities and powers, not the people. Listen, the people many times are deceived. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so the church has this immense spiritual authority and power and responsibility to take on principalities and powers for the nation or the nations that they are praying for. And this, this, this satanic movement that we're seeing is so prevalent, I'm going to show you how... Satan desires these, uh, these leaders to be under the influence of the, the satanic, uh, under the influence of the Antichrist spirit. But God has given us authority over these things to set them free. God declares in the book of Revelation, Jesus said it, he who overcomes, listen, he keep and keeps my works until the end. To him I will give power over the nations. Did you hear that? That's what he says right there. That's the word of God. He shall rule. That is you and I. We will rule with Jesus. He gives us a share in the rod of iron that he rules the nations with. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall dash, they shall be dashed to pieces like a potter's vessel as also I have received from my Father, Jesus says. Revelation 2, 26 and 27. This is a powerful revelation for you and I, that we have a share in, our, in the rulership of Jesus in the earth. Now, this authority and power over spiritual wickedness is a necessity. Why? Because evil is, it, it, it consumes. It is like a plague. And if it is not stopped, if, it, 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 if there are no rules, if there is no spiritual power and authority to oppose it, it will, it, Satan will destroy men's souls, dragging them into hell. And this is what the battle is all about. And only the church has the authority and power to break off this spiritual wickedness, not only from individuals, but from our nation. When evil rulers arise in our nation, and just let me zero in on our nation because he told me to interpret everything that I'm seeing according to Daniel, chapter 5, the prophet Daniel. When evil movements swell among the people, it is God's special weapon, special weapon, hallelujah. I love what Kim Clement said. I'm going to play that prophecy here in a moment again. The church, the special weapon, the church that, that must fight the spiritual battle and the spiritual warfare to free those under the deception of Satan and his demon principalities and powers. Listen, before revival can break out, we have to bind and cast down and cause to fall these evil principalities and powers. So the Bible is clear. Our battle is not with flesh and blood, as I said, but against principalities and powers that try to usurp authority over the will of God for people and nations. 
it is important that Christians not run and hide at what the world calls, and many in the church call, politics. Why is it that Christians run and hide at this hour? And Kim and I were discussing this. Listen, when, when God rules in government, God calls it government. It's not politics to God. It's the kingdom that he, of men that he is ruling over. Somebody say amen. This is just a framework, Democrat, Republican. So what? God has morality. God has biblical principles. And whoever aligns with that will prosper, whether they be Republican or Democrat. Somebody say amen. It's the truth. And right now, Republicans are aligning with the word of God. And Democrats are not. And I'm going to show you this. And this is, this is not a rejection of any person other than those who are aligning with the spirit of Antichrist. I'm going to show you this. So important that we understand this. Daniel 5, the Most High God, 21, says, He rules in the kingdoms of men and appoints over it whomever he chooses. King Belshazzar, king of Babylon, was under a delusion, a deception as, un, as an unopposed king. And this is how rulers who want power want to rule things. They want to be unopposed. They will silence every voice. You can see the lawsuits against Robert F. Kennedy. I mean, just get him off the ballot. Let's silence him. Let's silence, let's silence Donald Trump. Let's put him in every lawsuit. I'm telling you, you cannot weaponize. God will not allow that to prosper. He will not. It is against God. Whew, I went there. Hallelujah. King Belshazzar wanted to be unopposed. And we see that. And I shared about that last week. Those who seek to be unaccountable. And listen, God is moving. And so you have to share the truth. And you have to, these are all signs that God is showing us. He is showing us these things. And I pray that many in America, young people, old people, that we all open our eyes to what God is showing us, the signs that he's showing us. He trusted, that is King Belshazzar, listen, in, he trusted in soothsayers, astrologers, idol worshipers, witchcraft. He trusted them for wisdom instead of learning, listen, from the lesson also in the book of Daniel from his father, King Nebuchadnezzar, who had an experience with God's providential hand. And you can read about that in the book of Daniel as well, early chapters. King Belshazzar con consulted diviners and those with familiar spirits instead of consulting with Daniel, who was known to have, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit within him and wisdom from God. And eventually, King Belshazzar called upon Daniel. These evil and wicked guides, these astrologers, these so-called wise men, were the first ones that King Belshazzar turned to when God opposed him with the writing on the wall. The same evil principalities, listen, and powers that engulf King Belshazzar still seek to engulf and destroy leaders and nations, including America. And that's why the church must pray for those who are so deceived. In the book of Revelation, chapter 17, we see the Antichrist spirit, Mystery Babylon, the Bible calls it. And remember, King Belshazzar was the king of Babylon. This spirit that was in the ancient Babylon is still pervasive and flowing and trying to deceive and destroy souls and destroy nations. It is an Antichrist spirit that, that boasts against God. And we see it in the book of Revelation. It manifests in such a massive way in the nation's and Jesus begins to evict Satan, and eventually he will find himself in the lake of fire. Somebody say amen. amen. Revelation chapter 17, verse 4 says, The woman was arrayed, that is mystery Babylon, that is deceiving and seducing the nations and endeavoring to deceive and seduce our nation. Mystery Babylon, this woman was arrayed in purple. This is all symbolic. This is all so uh, visually we can understand it. And scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a gold cup 
Oh, very alluring, isn't it? Very deceptive. But that cup was full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And uh, on her forehead, a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. That's a pretty bad title, I would say. This ancient demon principality, listen, is possessing people today. Possessing people. How do I know this? It's a sign, and I'm going to show you here in a moment. Just one example that is so obvious that we cannot miss it. I don't want you to miss it, and that's why God is having me preach this. But this, this principality, this mystery Babylon the Great, is, is possessing. It is looking to possess people in power and the masses in our nation. And the church must stand against it today. It is seeking to gain inroads into laws and regulations, indoctrination and in culture and education, in media, in religion even. Arts and entertainment and certainly politics or government. In times like these, listen, the Most High God calls Christians to use their faith for something that is way above our pay grade, so to speak. Somebody say amen. But the Bible says that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, and we crush down on principalities and powers. Why? Because we are seated with Christ in his throne. And we may be here on earth, but we are also spiritually seated with Christ. Somebody say amen with the same authority. But in times like these, the Most High God calls on Christians to engage in spiritual warfare by faith with his rod of iron and the full armor of God. Why? Because souls are at stake. It's just not our nation, America. It's souls within the nation in the valley of decision. Many deceived leaders and people in our nation are groomed for years by Satan. Children, innocent children are groomed by, by their parents in witchcraft, groomed by darkness, groomed by indoctrination. You see it all around you. It's happening right now. We see it in our schools, indoctrination of perversion, the LGBTQ indoctrination, not the community. Listen, God wants them to be saved. I'm talking about the indoctrination. You must accept this and you must applaud it like we do. No, 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 we must not. You cannot bow your knee to that. Somebody say amen. We have to stand against it. Why? So that those who are deceived by it can be free. If we embrace it, what hope do they have? Let me go on here. These deceived leaders in our nation, people who are groomed by Satan to partner with this evil, perverse <laughs> mother of harlots, mystery Babylon, lawlessness, and listen, the shedding of innocent blood in rebellion against God and His holy word. They're doing it and they are applauding it. Like King Belshazzar did when he brought out the holy vessels from the temple and praised the gods of, of gold and, and iron and, and wood and stone and blasphemed God. These are the same, this is the same mystery Babylon that is happening in our nation among our leaders right now. And you and I must pray. You and I must do warfare. Somebody say amen. Now, last week I shared a prophecy by Kim Clement from 2024, 14 years ago, that spoke of these things that we are seeing I want to share it again. I want to unpack it just a little bit, a little bit more, very quickly. But then I want to, I want to share with you another prophecy that he talked about that has everything to do with our times right now. And you know I don't normally do this. I am a word guy. Give me the word of God. But I'm telling you, I am so stirred in my spirit concerning the accuracy of Prophet Kim Clement, like I have never been stirred in my life concerning these things. And so let's listen concerning the assassination attempt, and look to your vice president and what that means. Let's take a listen. Where is Charles? That I have Let's turn it back, turn it back, turn it back. Let's go back. Look to your 
vice president. Go all the way back. This is where the Lord says tonight, your major, this is where the Lord says there shall be one, this is where the Lord says there shall be one. There it is. Assassination attempt. I shall endeavor to destroy the plans that I have for this nation. Vice President, this is where the Lord says tonight, your major forces of darkness that have endeavored to bring to nothing this nation, but yet I will supply a very special weapon to this nation. of the enemy in a very peculiar manner. This night is a Saturday night. This is where the Lord says, I require that my people stand in agreement with the prophet as he prophesies resurrection to America. Come on. Ten, this was... This was what was that, 20 years ago. Give God praise right now. Now, just let me unpack that real quickly. First, the assassination attempt was intended to destroy God's plan for America. Our Vice President Kamala Harris is a sign to us, and I'm going to show you that as well. Listen, she was, she was raised and indoctrinated in Hinduism. There has never been a presidential candidate, and now she is a presidential candidate, according to the Democrats, now they have raised her up, and she, the, the evidence, the reason why we are to look to her is we are to see her as a sign, just like how God protected President Trump as a sign to raise him up. He has removed Joe Biden from the presidency. That is a sign that he is removing the Democrat Party. Why? Because they are weighed in the balance and found wanting. But also, listen, never in the history of America have we ever had a presidential candidate who has been indoctrinated in Hinduism? Hinduism. Now listen, I love people who are in India or here in America who are deceived by Hinduism. I want them to become a Christian. Listen, this is a spirit of darkness. This is a, this is a spirit of wickedness that we have to battle. But she has been indoctrinated in Hinduism. Her mother raised her in the Hindu temple in rituals. Listen, this is a fact. In chants, incantations, her middle name is Devi, means the mother of goddesses who manifests herself as all other goddesses. This is uh, Hinduism is the practice of occultism and witchcraft. Did you know that? How many knew that? How many did not know that? How many know that now? And what is in a name? Revelation. Always revelation. Now, the plot of the enemy, enemies of America to bring our nation to nothing at this time have been spoiled. Somebody say amen. God has raised up a special weapon, and you and I are a part of it, the church. And five, the resurrection of America that God has planned is in action. Somebody say amen. This brings me hope. This brings me hope. Now, there's another prophecy from Kim Clement, and I'm not glorifying Kim. I'm talking about the Spirit of God within the man. Within the man, 10 years ago, spoke this prophecy, and you got to hear this. Knowing the background of Kamala Harris, in 2014, he shared this, this great prophecy concerning this presidential election. How in the world... Did it become so accurate? Well, God was already here in our time speaking of the assassination and speaking of the vice president. I remember when Kim Clement spoke that, I was watching as he was speaking, and I'm thinking, what in the world? And some people on this next prophecy talking about a witch in the White House thought it was about Hillary Clinton, but she never practiced witchcraft. And I thought, no, I can't share that, Lord. That is, that is not what I'm seeing, and the Lord confirmed it. Of course, she never became president. But understanding 
that Kamala Harris has been trained. I'm not saying she's practicing now Hinduism. I do not know. Notice there's nobody talking about it. But I'm telling you there is a secret weapon of revelation that God is giving us in this hour. And we must preach it and we must pray. I'm not, I'm not saying these things to, dis, to cause uh, any disparaging uh, way of looking at her. I'm just saying that this is something that God is opposed to. It is a sign to us. That we have to understand so that we can pray more accurately. So, so many people are so deceived. Well, I like Kamala Harris. You know, this and that about her. Well, I, li- I, I like her too. I love her in Christ. But I'm telling you, when somebody is deceived, we must pray and we must shout it out. We must. And pray that God deliver her from her deception. Somebody say amen. Look to your vice president. Ring so loud in this moment, so loud that it is a massive sign to our nation and to us. And it seems like no one is talking about it. But because Kamala Harris is the one whom the Democrat Party desires to put in the White House, this prophecy that you are about to hear and her indoctrination in Hinduism must be heard loud and clear. Let's listen to it. Up, pray. That's Donald Trump. Well, the enemy will do everything in his power to put a witch in the White House. Did anybody hear what he just said? For Jezebel has chased away the prophets and even Elijah. That's symbolism. I'm going to try now to explain. I that. have said, go back. For this shall be dismantled, so that there will be no more corruption in the White That's House. That's God's goal. That is God's goal. God is endeavoring to take corruption out of people. That's my TikTok sound right there. God is endeavoring to take corruption and sin out of people. But because corruption and sin is in the heart of people, when they ascend to power, corruption and sin is, is very pervasive. Now notice this. Let's overlay these two prophecies that we just heard very quickly, and then I'll conclude. Number one, we are to pray, he says, for Donald Trump. The man that I have raised up, pray. And many times, uh, Kim Clement, this was before Donald Trump was ever president or announced that he would run for president. Uh, uh, Kim Clement would call Donald Trump God's man over and over in his prophecies, God's man. And I would think, Donald Trump... I didn't even like Donald Trump at the time. I did not like him at all. I went to a conference one time with my son, and he was one of the speakers. I'm like, I don't want to hear him. Why would I want to hear him? He's verbose. He's loud. He's sometimes nasty. All of that. I don't like that. But you know, God has different ways of looking at people. Aren't you glad? He does not look on the outward appearance, but he looks on the heart. And I don't understand those things anyway. That's just my little opinion of him when this, this prophecy, these prophecies were coming forth. And, you know, I weigh things. I just don't let them, you know, guide me. The word of God. The word of God is my foundation. The word of God is what leads me. The word of God is what sheds light on our path. And so... Let's overlay these two prophecies. Number one, we are to pray for Donald Trump to be protected and raised up for his second term. Somebody say amen. That's a sign of God. That's why God protected him. Number two, God's special weapon, the church, is to see all that the enemy is doing and and to influence in this election and combat it with spiritual warfare. And that's what we did this morning. Somebody say amen. It's so important for you to be here on Sunday. Be here on Saturday if you can. And number three, as the church, we are to see the evil objectives of the enemy. And to put uh, a witch in the White House is an evil agenda. Someone that's given over to witchcraft, I should say. Someone that's given given over to Hinduism. And this is a rebellious deception of the enemy. I cannot believe an entire political party in our nation would do anything like this. As I said, Kamala Harris is, is, has dabbled and been indoctrinated in this Hinduism, and its demonic powers is connected to overpowering 
your enemy. And Jesus said, bless your enemies. Number four, overlaying these two prophecies as the church, we are to see how the spirit of Jezebel, and this spirit of Jezebel is pervasive in our nation right now, has caused great fear and silence pastors in this nation at unprecedented levels. They are so afraid that people would get up and walk out. And how many know that there are casualties of war whenever you preach the gospel or you preach the word of God? There are people that will walk out on you. You cannot fear man in the pulpit, period. If, you, if anyone is to be a man of God or a woman of God, they cannot fear man. And say, oh, I don't want to lose that person. I'm telling you, that is weak and sad. And we cannot go back. we got to go to the things that God has taught us to be. And the people that he's, he's raised us up to be. And so, this prophecy that says, uh, uh, from Kim Clement, is talking about how the Jezebel spirit have, has brought fear upon even men with, and women with great mantles like Elijah. But God is taking it away. He is dismantling it. And we are indeed to go back to the place where our first love is Jesus. Go back to the place where we will preach fearlessly and demand and command the devils to fall in our nation and dispossess our land. Somebody say amen. amen. And this witchcraft shall be dismantled. Somebody say amen. That's what the prophecy said. This, this witchcraft will be dismantled, number six, by the Lord Most High, so that there will be no more corruption in the White House. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, are there going to be sinners in the White House? Yes, there will be. Sinners, we're all sinners. And so we need a Savior. We need someone that is acknowledging Jesus and leaning on Jesus and calling on godly men and women, not sorcerers, astrologers, witchcraft, all of that. Somebody say amen. That's why I brought that out about King Belshazzar. He called upon and raised up unwise men. The Bible calls them wise men. That is kind of a, uh, a misnomer. But astrologers, they leaned. He leaned upon them. We need a man in the White House who will lean upon the word of God. He may not be the most perfect Christian, but he is a Christian, and he was raised Christian. And if you understood his heritage, you would understand what I mean. You need to go do a search on his heritage. His great-grandma and aunt were revivalists in the Herbides Islands where the outbreak of the Spirit of God broke out and, and America was affected. We don't hear these things, but God sees it. God knows it. Now listen, I'm going to conclude. I promise. Somebody say amen. Finally, Pastor. Hallelujah. Now is the time to run to the battle, not run from it. Somebody say amen. Like young David ran toward Goliath. And took him down with one miraculous throw of his sling. Hallelujah. You do not know how powerful your weaponry is. Hallelujah. And why should Christians be silent when Jezebel invites? Listen to what I'm about to tell you. When Jezebel invites Planned Parenthood, or I should say Planned Non-Parenthood, to murder innocent babies, at their national convention just this week, murder babies at the doorstep of a national party. Now tell me if God is for them or against them. He is against that spirit. He is against that spirit of rebellion. These are things that God has over and over and over again in his word caused judgment to come upon nations. That's why I'm so adamant today to do and say these things that I'm saying because I don't want America to fall under the same deception and judgment. This is an offense to God. The Most High God is opposed to such perversity and such murderous spirit. It is an affront to God to murder babies and, be, and applaud it and, 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 and invite them. This is occultism. At its zenith or at its lowest, it is witchcraft and the sacrifice 
unto idols of wood, of gold, and politics. Like Belshazzar, the king of Babylon, there are those in places of power in our nation who have cast off the God of the Bible, his word, his morality, and who are endeavoring to take our nation into the abomination of witchcraft and perversion and lawlessness and the antichrist spirit and mystery Babylon. That's what's happening right now. Now, you've never heard me preach like this before, but I'm telling you we are on the brink of it right now. And we are about to see either the greatest disaster or the greatest revival. And I believe the greatest revival. God's hand of mercy, his merciful judgment has appeared. And he is raising up, according to Daniel chapter 5, verse 21, and he is setting aside. Also Daniel 2, verse 21. Why? Because he's not done with America. Somebody say amen. amen. I mean, with, you know, last night we took, we took about 20 minutes to repent in our prayer meeting last night for America. We repented. We read through Daniel 9, a prayer of Daniel for his people in Israel. We repented for our nation. So many sins. So many sins that our nation has committed against God. But God has a remnant that is not committing sins, but that they are, they are, they are uh, engaging in spiritual warfare. God's hand of judgment is appearing. His signs are appearing to us very clearly so that America will repent, so that America will come to Jesus, so that America will give, the people of this nation will give their heart and there will be a massive revival. God declares that he is not done. Somebody say amen. I thought he was done. In this last election, I thought he was done. I thought, oh, and I wept. I literally wept for our nation. I, I shed tears for this nation. My heart was broken. I thought, how can we recover from this? But God, somebody say amen. But God. And so God declares through the prophet. Kim Clement, a resurrection to America. In other words, I will not destroy America. I'm going to bring resurrection to America. God says no more corruption in the White House, no more corruption in the halls of Congress, no more corruption at the Supreme Court level. And I pray that for Ohio in the halls of the governor, in the halls of of Congress there, in the House, in the Senate. I believe that nations are going to be blessed because of this great nation that we are praying for right now. He will not have witchcraft in the White House. These blind leaders, listen, destroy our Constitution and our biblical foundation of morality. God says resurrection to America. Stand with me. Come on up here, Deb. I've worn you out with my preaching today. Hallelujah. I'm tired. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now listen, let me say just a few more things, and I want to speak over you this prophecy that God gave me. And if you would, Charles, bring those lights down. Now listen, these diviners that we are seeing, these occult leaders that are endeavoring to rise to power, and by the way, there are 6,000 witches who have united to pray against Donald Trump. Did you know that? Now you tell me. You tell me well, whose side Donald Trump or whose side God is on concerning Donald Trump. I love the, the fresh alliance of unity between Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Donald Trump. I love this fresh unity that we're seeing, a lifelong Democrat and a Republican. This is unity. This also is a sign. This is a sign to our nation. The unity that you have been praying for and believing for is here. But you must reject the witchcraft that is endeavoring, the spirit of Babylon that is endeavoring to take over. And you are seeing the signs of God's rejection of them. God has stepped in. And he is bringing unity against this spirit of Babylon and the globalist system. 
that is trying to bring the Antichrist and the Babylon's, Babylon spirit into this nation. God will not have it, at least not now. God is raising up his church to resist it. God has done these massive miracles, miraculous things, and we give him praise for it. Now I want you to close your eyes just for a minute and take your eyes off of me. God gave me this prophecy as I was sitting in my office. And so I just began to write it. And this is what I felt the Lord say to me. The time is not yet, says the Lord. The time is not yet for the Antichrist to be revealed. The time is not yet. Though the enemy conspires to hasten it, I will resist him in this hour. I will oppose and resist all those in league with him, great and small in this hour, who conspire to hasten the coming of the Antichrist. I have, have I not told you that this is in my word? In this hour, I will raise up those who will stand with me, says the Lord. Those who will not fear Jezebel, who will not withhold my judgments as they speak to the people of this nation. Yes, I have prophesied resurrection to America. Yes, I have declared it, says the Lord. And it is at the door. Pray, church. For my hand of mercy will triumph in America. I have determined 50 years for America, says the Lord. You shall not be overrun, America. I proclaim 50 years of resurrection to America if you will receive it. After that time is fulfilled, I will bring great triumphs in the nation, says the Lord. America shall be my battle axe among the nations to open the door for my great gospel, for the great harvest and in gathering of souls shall be accomplished after this. And then the fierceness of my wrath upon the wicked will be revealed. Somebody shout amen. Hallelujah. Now that's in the notes. As I've told you, I am not a prophet, I am a pastor, but I am in a prophetic stream right now. And I thank you for your grace.